Number 78, Integrated Concepts, letter A. Calculate the maximum torque on a 50-turn, 1.5-centimeter radius circular current loop carrying 50 microamps in a 0.5 Tesla field. All right, so we have the formula, right? That torque here is going to be equal to the number of turns multiplied by the current, multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the coil, multiplied by the magnetic field that passes through the coil, multiplied by then the sine of the angle. Now, the way that the torque is maximum, it's as, uh, the only way that that's going to happen is if this term is equal to 1, all right, because remember, sine of any angle is going to be between inclusive of zero and one. All right, uh, an angle of ninety degrees gives the sine of uh, the sine of ninety then is equal to one. So that would be a maximum. So we can just kind of cancel that out because that's just going to be a value of one. So now this works out to the the torque here is then the number of turns they told us is fifty. The current they said it's a microamp, but you know we need that in amps. So take fifty, multiply it by ten to the minus sixth. And then the cross-sectional uh, area, so they told us the radius, right, 0.15 centimeters, but, excuse me, 1.5 centimeters, but you know we need that in meters, so that's just 0 0.015 meters. And then we're going to take, uh, and that's the radius, so that's good, so that's pi times that radius, then of 0 0.015 squared, and then the magnetic field of 0.5. So here we go. So it's just simply going to be 50 times 50 times 10 to the minus 6 times pi times 0 0.015 squared times 0.5. So this is going to work out to be 8.8, .8, I guess, 4-ish, considering the rounding, times 10 to the minus 7th uh, Newton meters. Okay, that's the torque. All right. So now it's asking uh, for letter uh, B. It's saying if this coil is used in a gavometer um, that reads 50 uh, microamp full scale, what force constant spring must be used if it is attached one centimeter from the axis of rotation and is stretched by the 60 degree arc uh, moved? So it's basically something like this. You got this thing going on, blah, 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 and it's going to be deflected downward a little bit, 60 degree arc, I guess, that they're talking about. Uh, so what we need <clears throat> is we need to somehow relate this torque to... Um, to for, uh, spring constant or force constant. So we know that uh, torque shows, you know, the torque formula is that the torque will equal the force multiplied by the lever arm. And we also know that the uh, force of a spring is equal to the spring constant multiplied by the displacement of that spring from equilibrium. So we realize that these two formulas now have a common F term. So if I want to find the spring constant, what force constant they're asking us, so they're asking us to calculate for K, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for F. In other words, this would become F is equal to torque divided by radius. Uh, no, not radius. Well, lever arm, but it's rotating the circle, so it's technically radius, but whatever. Uh, that's going to be torque then over R is equal to K delta X. Now solve this for K, and we realize that we're going to have this particular, so K is going to be equal to then, uh, so it's going to be torque divided by then radius times the delta X. So in order to find K, right, we need to know the torque, which we do know. We need to know the radius, which we do know is one centimeter. But now we need to know this displacement, which they didn't tell us. But instead, they told us some arc that it moved. So what we need to do is find actually that arc length, right? So we can call this arc length is equal to then the radius multiplied then by the angle in which it was rotated through, okay? So uh, just be careful when you actually calculate this, you're going to need this in terms of radians, all right? Just be careful. So essentially, this arc length is the delta x, all right? So this formula now at the bottom will become the torque divided then by the radius multiplied then by the radius times that um, arc uh, of 60 degrees, but be careful, you need that in radians, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the torque here, and let me start plugging it in, I guess. Actually, I'm just going to work from this, all right? Let's get rid of the box, and we'll delete it. And so we're going to take that torque value and now divide it by the radius, which was 0 0.01 meters, times then 0 0.01 meters, obviously you could just square it, multiplied then by that value of 60 degrees, but we need that in terms of now radians, okay? So what you have to do is you have to remember your conversion here, 60 degrees. For every 180 degrees, there are pi radians, right? That goes way back. And now we can find our value, okay, of the spring constant. So when we do this, it's going to work out to be divided by 0 0.01 squared, multiplied by 60 times pi, 
divided by 180. Close those parentheses, and we get a value here of about uh, 8.44 times 10 to the minus 3. Yep, 10 to the minus 3, and that's going to be in terms of then uh, Newton per meter. All right, and that is the units for force constant. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.